I'm on. Thank you. <clears throat> I feel that the presence of the Lord is here this morning. I haven't spoken to anyone what the Lord had put upon my heart, but it seems that we are going toward that direction all the way through. Whatever word that was spoken was spoken according to what I already had in my mind by the Spirit of God. First of all, let me tell you, we are living in very perilous days. We are living in a hard times. This is a time of confusion. This is a time where people don't know where they are standing any longer. Even those who are Christians sometimes and their faith is not really based upon the word of God. They get confused. They don't know if they're coming, they're going. People don't know if they're male or female. They don't know if they're liberals or they are uh, liberal. They don't know if they are tall or small. It doesn't make any difference any longer. It seems that um, everybody is in a confused world. We are living in a confused world. Therefore, it's important this morning that, especially for us, that we know where we come from, that we know who we are, because we can only stand the future if we know who we are. We will not be able to stand the future unless we know who we are. First of all, we are not monkeys. We do not come from monkeys. I have a big problem. Every time I look in the mirror trying to find a monkey, instead I find myself. And it's kind of a very hard situation there. So it's very hard for me to believe that I come from the monkey. The Bible do tell us that we have a God which is great. We have a God which is almighty. We have a God who created us, who is a, an infinite God. He's a, an all-powerful God. He's an all-knowing God. He's a God that is everywhere, every place. And I thank God for that. Because sometimes I'm in some places and I feel that I am alone or I'm by myself. And it's, God, it's good to know that within your spirit, you feel that God is there with you. Your father, my father, he's there. He's there to take care of us because he loves us. He's an omnipotent God. He's an omniscient God. Now, I can give you scripture for that, but I know that these things, you know them already forever. You know them already pretty well. God, in the beginning, did not create a monkey, but he created Adam. He created him at his own image. He gave him all glory and power. He was, he was vested with the greatness of the power of God for ruling the universe, for the ruling of the earth in which God had created for him. He also created a Garden of Eden where he made all the best things that he could think of. He created them. He put them together. And then he said, because I love you, I want to give you the best. Just remember that. God loves you. He wants to give you the best. And so he gave him the best. The creation he had created was good. But something that he created in the Garden of Eden was even better. Because it was the kingdom where Adam and Eve were able to live and stay there. They were created with all power. They had power upon the eagle, upon the, uh, upon the birds. They had power upon the uh, animal on the earth. They had power upon the earth. They had power upon their own body, for they were created not to die. Therefore, they were in a real paradise. Somehow, some way, cannot never figure out why, they lost all of that paradise in which God had created for him. Now we look at Eden as a lost paradise, no longer something that God has created where he put at Adam, but Adam was not there anymore, uh, anymore. He was cast away because he missed and he missed to do what God wanted him to do. He refused that power. He refused all of the wealth in which God had created him to have. And so, uh, and so mankind now live in a terrible situation. We are in trouble. The earth is in trouble. The heavens are in trouble. We, humankind, are in trouble. We are only waiting for the coming 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there is a, uh, there is a situation in which can be uh, uh, which which can be changed, and the changing is very clear. For Jesus came; he came to the world so that he would die on the cross to give us a renewed Garden of Eden. Now we are living no longer in a lost paradise, but we can live here as Christians, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the new spiritual paradise, where the presence of the Lord is there, where the glory of the Lord is there. Jesus died to give you restoration, to call God Father again. No longer he was the judge, that will put Adam away, uh, mankind away from the Garden of Eden. Now he has become the, uh, the Father. And therefore, because I am born again, I am born of the Spirit, I am born of God, I, the Spirit of God is in my life and in my soul. Now I can call him Father, because he is my Father. He, I was born again at the cross, and everyone must be born again at the cross in order to have restoration in the new Garden of Eden, spiritual Garden of Eden here on earth. We are living in trouble. Yes, we are. But we are Christians. We are saved. We are filled with the Spirit of God. Therefore, we are living in the restorated, restorated Garden of Eden. Are you living in the Garden of Eden today? Are you living in that place where you can really restore your soul and your life are you living today in that place where you can see where you can see the presence of God and the glory of God? Restoration was made at the cross. The cross is the beginning of all things. God, the, the cross, the Garden of Eden was the beginning of things for Adam. But the cross is the beginning of all things for those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. For he is my Savior. He has opened the door. Now I can go to the Father and call him Father. There is privileges in being born again. There are privileges in being born again, my friend. There are present. And, and, and one, of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, one of the privileges now that we can call God our Father. Galatians 4, 8, 6 in Romans 8, 15, it tells us that we, can, we are now the sons of God and therefore we can call him Father. I love to call him Father. I need the Father because as my, my material life, I need the Father to deal, to deal with me and train me and put me in the right way. So I need a spiritual father who will train me every day, who will push me into the things in which he wants me to do, which he knows that they are the best for my life. I need a father, and I thank God for Jesus Christ who has given me a father. Hallelujah. He has given me a father. Now the one to the cross, there is also another privilege. We are not only can call God the father, but now we can see the kingdom of God. John 3, 2, 8. And Jesus, say, uh, Jesus, uh, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Except a man is born again, he cannot see. What did I say? He cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you born again this morning? Are you born again this morning? I am. Therefore, I can see the kingdom of God. Can you see the kingdom of God? Don't get fooled by what you see around you. Remember that we are a chosen people, restricted in the way, in which in a spiritual way is that narrow road in which Jesus walked into. And we are walking in that road, and therefore, now through that way, we can see the kingdom of God. When I look at Jesus, I see the kingdom of God. When I look at Jesus, I see the Son of God. When I look at Jesus, Jesus, I see the Savior who is seated at the right hand of God. And there, and from there, he rules upon the whole earth. And therefore, he rules upon my life as well. He is. It's a privilege to be born again. That is a privilege because now I can see the kingdom of God. I, I, I love it when I'm able to stand in a night. 
when everything is passed over, the dark is coming, and you sit, you, you lay down in your bed, and before you go to sleep, and before you say, Lord, uh, let me, uh, I close my eyes and let me down to sleep, or whatever, that uh, prayer that is teach the kids, we say, you just lay there, and you just think about the kingdom of God. Let the song in your heart start coming and resurge in your heart and in your life. Let, the kid, let, let that song come and become part of your life. And as that song becomes part of your life, your spiritual eyes start, get, start opening up and you can see the kingdom of God. The best that I ever seen is in those, in those moments in which I am in full fellowship with the presence of God. It is not because I'm better than anybody else. It is not because I am more spiritual than anybody else. It is not because I know how to reach it before than anybody else. My friend, I don't know. I just sit there and before I come over here and I say, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to say, but you know it. And so, Lord, just lead me the way you want to. I don't know. He knows. We can see the kingdom of God. In the, in, the, in the blessing of the restored life in which we have, He has promised us never, and I mean never, never to leave us. He will never leave us. He will be with us. I mean, I mean you know, we need that thing, you know. Yeah. Can't have that, only two hands is not enough. <coughs> need, I need at least four. In John 14, chapter 14, verse 18, Jesus said to his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. Do you feel discouraged this morning? Do you feel that you the heaviness of the world is upon your life? It is your family giving you big trouble right now. Just remember one thing, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. You know how many times Jesus is at the door and knock and he wants to come to us and we are just not ready for him? We are not ready, Lord, not now, I'm busy, I've got to do the dishes. No, Lord, not now. I'm busy. You see, I'm on a computer. I'm ju just really doing something very important. Please, Lord, just wait just a little bit longer. And we make God as a second choice in our life. And we make our own life the first choice. My friend, it is time that we as the children of God, we take authority upon our life. It is time that as the children of God, we come back into the spiritual garden of Eden and we take the authority in which has been given to us and let us tell our body, it's time for you to just shut down and keep, se keep second place. Let the Spirit take the first place, for I want to see God. That's, it's important, my friend, because if we can't see God, then we are finished. There is nothing else that we can do. There is nothing else in life. We must be able to see God. He will never leave me alone. He will not leave me comfortless. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrew 13, 5. I will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter where you go. You are flying on a, on, on a high fly, uh, going from one place to another, up in the sky. Remember, he's there because he said he will not leave you. Are you going over the, uh, over the sea with the big waves and the, the waves uh, keep going and the, and the boat goes up and down just like that? Just remember, he is there. He will not leave you. He's done that for the disciples. He can do it for us. Why? Because we are living in the new spiritual garden of Eden at this time, at this stage, at this stage of our life. Are you? Are you? It's been restored to us. If we are not, we are losing. It's just like me saying, come on, I'll take you out for dinner. And then you come and have for dinner, and I say, don't worry, I'll pay for it. And then you say, well, but I don't want to eat. But then you miss out. Thanks for me, I saved the money. But God is not like me. 
He doesn't want to save the money because he's a giver and he wants to give. And therefore, if we live and stay with him, he will give us what is needed for our life. Number three, to be born again, there is a promise, another promise, a third promise. He promised to keep us. He promised to keep us. Sometimes I feel like a little boy walking from here to there, and I have to learn all over again how to put my legs together. They say that when you get old, you become just like a boy, but it's Believe me, now that I am, <clears throat> uh, I know exactly how I feel, just like a little boy. If I walk from here to there, I have to watch where I put my feet and make sure that my legs will take me there. Because sometimes they don't take me there. <laughs> they don't want to take me there. They want to fall down. And I, and I, and I just don't want to fall down. I want to, just, I want to keep, keep to get there. Spiritually, my friend, I'm exactly the same way. I don't know where I'm make, 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 put my foot on the next step. But I know one thing. He will keep me. He will put his hands around my life. And he will keep me. Luke 4.15, he said, It is written. Now, I want you to know. I'll tell you that later. It is written. He shall give angels charge over thee. To what? To keep you. You know what? Jesus didn't say that. It's in the Bible, of course. But Jesus didn't say that. Who said that? Huh? It was the devil. He told Jesus exactly those words. He said, the angel, he will send angels that keep you. So he knows that we have angels that keep us. He knows. I don't have to tell him. He knows. He told Jesus. And therefore he knows that God has given angel to keep charge over us. For he will keep us. And it's so beautiful to know that when you walk. You walk with the angels of God. It's so beautiful to know that when you're going from one place to another, you are not alone, but you are in the presence and with the angels of the Lord. The fourth promise of becoming a new Christian, uh, um, becoming to the cross, is to, he has given us also the promise that he will seat us, that we will be seated with him in heavenly places. That's what he promised you. Are you seated in the heavenly place, my friend? I ask myself every time I look in the mirror, and I got a lot of mirrors in my house, because I live alone and I have to have some company somehow. <laughs> and every time I go through a mirror and I look, do I know that I'm seated in the heavenly places? And I still look in the mirror and I say, lucky you. You are seated in the heavenly places. I have nothing to worry any longer because I am seated in the heavenly places. Adam was seated in the heavenly places in the Garden of Eden. Jesus came and died on the cross so that you and I can be seated in the heavenly places in the presence and in the right hand of God. That is our purpose of our salvation. That is our purpose for our future. That is our purpose that God has got for each and every one of, of us. Ephesians 1, 3, Ephesians 2, 6, and so on and so on. You can go and look at the scriptures itself. Number five. <laughs> Don't get uh, discouraged. I get at the end, you know. I mean, after all, I only have so many pages. Uh, by the way, I finished the paper. Uh, <laughs> and um, we, we are, he's promised that also for a heavenly future. How many times we think about what we're going to do when we go to heaven? What is going to be the place and what is going to be the duty in which we are going to take over when we are going to go to heaven? Well, the promise of God in Ephesians 2, 6, he said, He has raised up together and he has made us to sit. 
together in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. First of all, my friend, I am going to sit next to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is my first job that I have to do. That is the first thing that we have to do, to be seated at the right hand, right, right, uh, at the right hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us, he has elevated us to bring us to the point higher than the Garden of Eden. Now we are seated at the right hand of God. No longer we are seated in the Garden of Eden, but we are seated in the highest place of God. Behold, I show you a new mystery. You know all of that scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, uh, 51 and 52. What a future is for us to enjoy. What a glorious days are those days in which we are going to enjoy when we are passed away from this uh, pilgrimage and going into the other side where we are in the very presence of God. It is okay. We, can, we don't have to wait until we die to enjoy the greatness and the glory of God. We can live in the Garden of Eden, spiritual Garden of Eden, right here today. But there are some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful days ahead in which will come for us. We are seated at the right hand with God, with Christ in God, and we will enjoy what? What we are sitting there for? Just to look at each other? It's the mind. That we do that all of our life. We come to church. We sit at the chair to do what? To look at each other. And the best thing to do, you're looking at the best of me because you're looking at my back. We don't even look at each other in the face. We look at each other in the back. And we do that all of our life. Then we think that when we're going to go to heaven, we are going to be seated at the right hand of God with Christ. And we are going to do what? Look at each other. No, my friend, we are not going to look at each other. We have done that enough while we are down here. It is time that when we are over there, we get into action. And I believe that we can get into action here because we are already seated at the right hand of, with Christ. Am I boring you? Mm. What a future to enjoy. The place in which we will be, it is a heavenly glorious place. Revelation 21, 16, 22, it tells you exactly what that place is going to be. Twelve gates, made of twelve pearls. Every several gate was a one pearl. The streets of the city were a what? Pure gold. So what do you want to save gold here for? <laughs> I already have it up there. <laughs> and I have so much that I'm so rich. I don't know what to do with it anymore. I have so much gold that I don't know what to do with it. Hmm. There will be no financial gain in heaven, my friend. There is no way of saying, I'm going to put 10 for saving for tomorrow. Why well, we are not saving for the rainy day, because there will be no rainy days in the presence of God. There are no rainy days when we come into the, when we are into the very presence of God. There is no money over there that we can spend because everything is free, exactly as it was for Adam in the Garden of Eden. And if you can understand that, then you understand what is going to be when we get up there. No pocketbook, no money, no credit card. Oh, hallelujah. It will be. Everything will, everything will be restored to men. <sighs> but do you know that if we live really in the spiritual and we live in the, we let God work in our life, we can live here just as well as prosperous as Adam was in the Garden of Eden before he fell. Before the fall, he was living gloriously. And there is no reason why we can't do. I told you many times, when the Lord called me into the ministry, I was only 17 years old. 
it was the time for me to make a decision in order to accept my responsibility in the family and also responsibility in the world and trying to make money for the future and trying to save. And when the Lord said to me, I want you to work for me. I want you to, to get into the ministry. And I said, Lord, I can't get into the ministry. I can't even talk. I have an accent, and everybody say that I have an accent. And so I said, Lord, what, what am I going to do? And he said, don't worry, I'll tell you what to do. Then eventually somebody started, uh, some of the, when I told the family, the family said, well, uh, you know, um, really, it's okay if you want to serve God, but I think that you should do something else just to Rebecca. Rebecca, we've got a problem. Why do we need a backup? Isn't God enough? And, and I couldn't figure it out. I mean, I was young, but I wasn't stupid. And I couldn't figure it out. What do I need a backup? Well, is it just in case, you know, if you don't have enough money, the ministry doesn't bring enough money, you got a backup. You got the money, you know, you know where to take care of yourself. And I said, Lord, my family is confused. And I said the following day when I, the Lord spoke to me uh, in that particular place where I was, and he said, he, I said, Lord, my family is confused. They keep saying that I need a backup. What am I going to do? And the Lord said, you work for me, I'm your backup. Eighty-six years old, my friend. 60 some years in the ministry we traveled around the world so many times that i can't even remember we minister in so many countries about 17 countries that we minister we got children spiritual children all over the place i never beg ask for money for anybody to pay for me the lord always provided i raised the family and the Lord always provided. My friend, when the Lord said, I'll provide for you, he means he'll provide for me. And just for you to know, since I've been in the ministry every four years, I have been able to change the car. And the people, the, my kids, they said, Dad, are you going crazy? What do you want to change the car for? You've got to have a car. I said, but the Lord said he's going to change a car every four years. So what am I going to worry about it? They don't understand. You know why? Because I live in the Garden of Eden. I have learned to live in the Garden of Eden. And there is a privilege to live there. For God is there. In the Garden of, in the Garden of Eden, when we go into the heavenly city the, in the future, the Lord said also that we don't need any money, no financial, because the streets are made of gold anyway. But there is one thing in which did puzzle me when I looked at it. The city that is built for square, there was no temple there. No place to worship. Did you notice it? Do you read it? You'll find out. And the city had no need of the sun, neither they had the moon to shine in it, for the glory of the Lord did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light there. There was no place of worship, because when we go to heaven, and my friend, that's what something that we have to learn while we are down here. When we're going to heaven, our way of life through eternity is going to be a way of life of worship. We don't have to go down to church every Sunday morning. Sunday morning is coming to us 24 hours a day for eternity. For we are we there. When Adam was in the garden, he was there, he was in fellowship with God. And when, and when God felt like he wanted to visit him, he went down and he visited with him. If we live in the Garden of Eden, while we are spiritual Garden of Eden, when we are down here, remember God will come and visit us by his power and by his spirit. 
in that city there will be no place of worship because worship will be a fact of life. Don't worry, I'm getting to the end. Just, just because in case it didn't blow, everything goes on. <laughs> Worship will be a way of life. We will be able to see him face to face. We will know him as he has known us. For now we are going only looking through a glass. But when we will be there, we will see him face to face. And now we know only in part. But then we will know as he wants us him to know. We will know also as I am known. He will know him as I am known to him. How beautiful it would be. What you think about God. What you think about the Lord Jesus Christ. While you are here on earth. What people think about it. It will be nothing. With when we are going to see him face to face. And we will be able to know him. In the fullness of his glory. And the fullness of his power. What we know of him now. Is nothing my friend. Compared to what is going to be. When we are going to see him face to face. Isn't that great? Isn't that glorious? Isn't that a wonderful thing to do? With him, what are we going to do? Sit at the right hand of God and we'll be sitting there. We'll be getting fat. Sit there and doing nothing. All you do is just grow, grow, grow that way. That's not the end at all. God has created us at his image. And because he has created us in his, his image, he's training us now to trust him. And once he is training us to trust him, when we go over there, he knows to what degree he can trust us because he knows how we trusted him while we were here. And according to our trust, he will give us a job to rule upon the universe in which he has created. Hallelujah. We will be able to rule upon the universe in which he has created. How I rule? By sitting at the right hand of Christ, at the right hand of God. That's the way I'm going to rule. Not because I knew, but because I am there with him. Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. What glory? The glory of God. And what is the glory of God? The firmament and the whole creation of God is the glory of God. For the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. We are its workmanship created by God. Next thing that we will do, we will know the glory of, the, we will know the glory of his creation. For we are created by him to the image of Christ. We have a spirit body, my friend. Don't know what you have, but I have a spirit body. How I received that spirit body, the world, the, di the day I was created, I was created to the image of God. And I had a spirit there that was renewed by the power of the cross through the Lord Jesus Christ. That empowered my spiritual life in which was lucky at that, until that time. Therefore, because I have a spirit body, I am really enjoy freedom. Freedom is to live a spiritual life. That is freedom. Freedom is not what man can give you. That's it. That is freedom with limitation. There is always something attached. You vote for me and I'll do this for you. You do this for me and I'll do that for you. Somebody ask you and our friend, you do that for me and I'll do that for you. But when we are in the spirit, we are created to the image of God. And therefore, we will be able to be really enjoy freedom in the spirit. Isn't that beautiful when we come to church and we enjoy the freedom of the spirit? That's nothing to compare with the real freedom when we get up there. Another thing that will happen, and I'm shortening things up, I'm realizing that it's getting pretty late. You know how I realize that it's getting late? You see, I never watch my watch. 
<clears throat> my body tells me. When we are up there, we will be reunited with our loved ones. We will see our sisters. We will see our mothers or fathers. We will see those who are up there. For in Psalm 10, number 10, uh, 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 50, verse 5 says, Gather my saints together unto me. Those who have made a covenant with me by a sacrifice. A covenant with him by a sacrifice. I have decided to serve him through Christ Jesus who paid the sacrifice. I have decided to be able to follow him through Christ Jesus who made the sacrifice. And my friend, my decision is important because my decision is what is going to keep me until the end of the world. We are reminded that we will see to be reunited with our, with our loved one. I will be there. I want to see my mother. I never seen my mother. She died after I was born. And therefore, I don't know her. But then I will know her. When I go up there, I will. You will know your brothers, your sisters. You will know those who have gone before you. You will know some of the greatest men that have served God. You will know some of those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be there. But as I look around, there is still room. There is still room. Would you like to be there? It is your intention this morning to be there. Do you want to be there? There is one way. Through Jesus Christ and the cross, we can open the door for you to come before the presence of God. Let us stand for a moment. Let us just for a moment examine our hearts. Let us think for a moment of where we are standing. Am I living in a spiritual garden of Eden? Do I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross as much as I think I believe? Am I set my way, spiritual and material? To walk through the, to the way that brings to the cross, it brings to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be there, for I want to be seated with Christ in the heavenly places. I want to know the glory and the power of God. I want to know for God to remind me all the things that he has promised me and I have not received because I have not looked for. I want to be there. Do you want to be there? Do you want to be there? Do you want to receive that? Do you want to live in the Garden of Eden? I do. Therefore, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to say, Lord, I am going to stand here as a declaration that I want to be there. And it costs what it might cost. I want to come to the cross, and I want through the cross, I want to enter in. If you want to join me, just come for a few minutes as a declaration to God that we want to be there. I want to be there. I want to be there. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We're going to be there. I'm going to be there into the very presence of the Father. Oh, I want to sit and have everything. This is not an altar call, by the way. This is a decision making that I, from today on, I am going to be there. I want to be there. And I'll do everything I can in order to be there.
in order to be there. We had an altar call before, but now let us make a decision of our own free will. I want to be there. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.